Welcome to Spectrum Sphere, the channel where curiosity meets exploration, diving into a vast array of fascinating topics. From the mysteries of history to the wonders of science, we uncover it all. If you're passionate about discovery, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and join us on this journey of learning and entertainment. Let's start today's adventure into the shadows of the past with the gunpowder plot. The explosive conspiracy that aimed to reshape English history. As the screen fades from black and the dramatic music crescendos, we are taken back to 1605. Here lies the tale of the gunpowder plot, a shadowy scheme that sought to overturn a kingdom and change the course of English history. This is England's historic conspiracy. The gunpowder plot, a scheme steeped in treachery and ambition, aimed to annihilate the House of Lords during the state opening of Parliament. Its objective was clear to obliterate the king and the Protestant government, paving the way for a drastic shift in power in 17th century England. In 1605, England was a kingdom of deep divisions, ruled by King James I. Ascending the throne after Queen Elizabeth I, his reign brought hopes of religious unity. Instead, James's policies favored Protestants, fueling disenchantment among Catholics who found themselves increasingly alienated and persecuted setting the stage for rebellion. The shadowy figure at the heart of this treacherous scheme was Robert Catesby, a charismatic and steadfast Catholic gentleman. Appalled by the oppression of Catholics under King James, Catesby conceived an audacious plan to obliterate the monarch and his parliament, hoping to trigger a Catholic uprising across England. At this juncture, religious strife played a pivotal role. The conspirators, predominantly Catholics, faced severe persecution under Protestant rule. Their plot was ignited by a longing to end this oppression and restore a Catholic monarch to the throne, revealing how deep-seated religious conflicts could motivate a conspiracy of such explosive consequences. In their search for an expert in explosives, the conspirators enlisted Guy Fawkes, an experienced soldier with adept knowledge of gunpowder. Fox was entrusted with the critical role of igniting the powder kegs that would demolish the parliament, a task suiting his military background and zeal for the cause. Continuing our journey into the heart of the conspiracy, let's delve into the architectural intricacies of the historic House of Lords. The conspirators plotted to position the explosives in the Undercroft, a storage area directly beneath the assembly chamber, a strategic location to ensure maximum devastation. As the plot thickened, the conspirators faced the daunting task of amassing gunpowder. Under the cover of night, barrels of the volatile substance were stealthily transported and stored in a rented cellar, situated ominously beneath the House of Lords, setting the stage for an explosion that would rock the foundation of English monarchy. The plan to ignite the gunpowder required precision, Guy Fox, an expert in explosives, was to light a slow-burning fuse leading to the powder kegs. His timing had to be impeccable to ensure the explosion would occur when the king and parliament were in session, maximizing the plot's devastating impact. As the plot thickened, Thomas Percy emerged as a crucial player. A relative by marriage to Robert Catesby and known for his fervor and influence, Percy's inclusion fortified the conspiracy's ranks. Securing a house near Parliament, he became instrumental in providing access to the very heart of the intended target. Just days before Parliament's session, a twist occurred that would unravel their scheme. A letter, cloaked in secrecy and intrigue, made its way to Lord Monteagle, warning him to avoid the House of Lords. The anonymity of the author suggested an insider's knowledge, stoking fears and suspicion. Alarmed by the cryptic warning, authorities swiftly commenced an investigation. Every corner of Westminster was meticulously combed for any sign of foul play. The letter had not only hinted at a threat, but had effectively set a clock ticking on uncovering a plot that menaced the very heart of English governance. As darkness cloaked London, a search party's lanterns flickered through the underbelly of the Parliament. It was in the shadowy cellars, just past midnight, that they stumbled upon a suspicious figure. This man, cloaked in anonymity, was none other than Guy Fawkes standing guard over the gunpowder kegs. 
With Guy Fox apprehended, the grim process of interrogation began. Under relentless questioning and the looming threat of torture, Fox maintained a steely silence. Eventually, the king's order for harsher methods broke his resolve. Enduring days of excruciating torture, Fox finally yielded the names of his co-conspirators. While Guy Fox stood defiant, the authorities swiftly acted on his eventual confessions, pursuing the other culprits. One by one, the network of conspirators was dismantled as each member was arrested. With the veil of secrecy lifted, the full extent of the gunpowder plot was laid bare before an astounded kingdom. Following their arrest, the remaining conspirators alongside Guy Fox faced trial where they were convicted of high treason. The severity of their intended act led to the harshest of sentences. They were executed in January 1606, meeting their end through the grim process of being hanged, drawn, and quartered. In response to the thwarted gunpowder plot, King James I's government swiftly enacted new legislation aimed at preventing such treason in the future. These laws significantly tightened restrictions on Catholics, imposing harsh penalties for failing to comply with Protestant religious practices, casting long shadows over England's religious freedoms. Following the foiling of the gunpowder plot, November 5th was established as Guy Fawkes Night, a tradition that persists to this day. Across England, people light bonfires, set off fireworks, and sometimes burn effigies of Guy Fawkes to commemorate the plot's failure and the survival of the king. The Guy Fawkes mask has evolved from its origins, becoming a global symbol of protest and anonymity. Popularized by the graphic novel and film V for Vendetta, it's been adopted by various movements to represent resistance against tyranny and the fight for freedom making its mark far beyond British history. The gunpowder plot's echoes can be found in the world of literature as well. Most notably, Shakespeare's Macbeth may have been influenced by the event, with themes of treachery and the supernatural reflecting the era's turmoil. It illustrates how deeply the conspiracy permeated the cultural fabric of the time. Moving beyond cultural ripples, the gunpowder plot also casts a long shadow on modern political debates, particularly concerning surveillance and public security. It's often cited in discussions on how far governments should intrude into private lives in the name of preventing acts of extremism, anchoring a historical precedent to present-day concerns. The Guy Fox mask has transcended its historical origins to become an emblem in protests and hacker culture. Emblematic of anti-establishment sentiments, it's widely recognized as a symbol of dissent, often worn by those challenging authority or advocating for social and political change in various movements around the world. The gunpowder plot's influence extends deeply into popular media, notably in the graphic novel and film V for Vendetta. Here, the iconic Guy Fox mask is donned by the protagonist, symbolizing rebellion against tyranny. The story reimagines Fox's anarchic spirit in a dystopian future, cementing the plot's legacy in modern storytelling. The legacy of Guy Fox ignites fierce debate even today. To some, he's a hero, a symbol of anti-authoritarian resistance. To others, a terrorist whose radicalism threatened countless lives. This duality prompts us to question, are acts of violence ever justified in the pursuit of political change? The gunpowder plot has indelibly shaped our perception of extremism. It's a historical mirror reflecting on current events, compelling us to consider the thin line between freedom fighter and terrorist. It challenges us to think critically about the rationale and ethics behind extreme actions for political ends in our own era. In the aftermath of the gunpowder plot, English society saw tighter controls on Catholic citizens and a climate of suspicion that lingered for centuries. It was a crucible that hardened state policies against dissent and shaped the discourse around national security and religious freedom, a legacy that resonates to this day. As we observe Bonfire Night annually, it prompts us to reflect on its relevance today. While a historical moment, it also opens dialogue on the balance between security and liberty and how past events shape our modern cultural identity, showcasing the enduring impact of the gunpowder plot on contemporary society.
In conclusion, the gunpowder plot of 1605 is not just a story etched in history. Its echoes resonate in today's discussions on civil liberties, state control, and protest. It stands as a powerful narrative on the lengths individuals will go for their beliefs and the indelible mark such actions leave on society. As we've explored, the gunpowder plot was a critical event in English history, characterized by its intent to upheave government, the religious tensions that sparked rebellion, and the enduring cultural impact that follows. We examine the key figures, their harrowing plan, and how the plot's legacy continues to influence modern culture. Thank you for exploring the intricate layers of the gunpowder plot with us here at Spectrum Sphere. If you've enjoyed this journey through history and its ripple effects on today's world, please show your support by clicking the like and subscribe buttons. Join us next time for more captivating stories and explorations.